Hey everyone, Jersey Mike. Today I'm going to show you how to wire in a rector seal float switch into the header of a ductless mini split system. Now I'm going to cover a lot of the major brands out there, Fujitsu, Mitsubishi, Daikin, Carrier, Train, uh, quite a few of them. The first thing you want to do before we do anything else, we want to make sure the power is off the system. Obviously, we don't want to be working on live wires. So there's two ways to do this. One, you can either shut off the breaker to the outdoor unit. Um, if you are not 100% sure which breaker it is, another option is to go to the outdoor unit, open the disconnect box, and pull the handle out. So what we're looking at here is the wiring schematic directly from Rector Seal. Um, on how to wire these particular units in. Uh, Fujitsu, Daikin, Mitsubishi, some LG systems will be like this as well. But basically what we're looking for here, what makes all these systems kind of the same, is that terminal blocks one and two on the indoor header, um, the wires that go to one and two, those are your power supply wires. So there's 120 volts on each one of these legs. The number three is the communication wire. Now different systems might label these slightly different, but they're all the same. You might see one, two, three, L1, L2, L3, or with Mitsubishi's like you see in the photo here, S1, S2, and S3. But one and two either way are 120 volts each. So what you're going to do on these systems, the first thing we're going to do is remove the wire that's on that number one terminal block. So it's going to be S1, L1, or just one. We're going to move that wire off. We're going to take the black wire from our float switch and the gray wire from our flow switch. We're going to take this wire we removed and we're going to wire not all three of them together. So all three of these wires are going to go right together. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to take the purple wire from our flow switch and we're going to connect that to the number one terminal that we removed the wire from on the header. So basically what we're doing here is we're breaking one leg of the 240 volts. So we're breaking 120 volts in a high water situation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the red wire from our flow switch and we're going to land that on terminal number two. Uh, which will be 2, L2, or S2, and we're just going to put that in right with the wire that's already existing there from the outdoor unit. So you're going to have two wires on that one terminal. Now the orange wire we don't use. We're just going to put a wire nut on it, cap it off, and that's it. You're done. Now all you got to do is test it, make sure it works. Now, when it comes to Train, American Standard, Lennox, they do things slightly differently than the other brands in two different ways. One, um, on these other brands, terminal blocks one and two are usually your power supply, and terminal block three is your communication wire. Whereas with these particular units, they use one and three as your power supply, and number two as your communication wire. The second difference with these brands is that they do offer uh, 120 volt header versions on smaller BTU units like a 6, a 9, a 12,000 BTU may actually be 120 volts. So in those cases the number three terminal is always going to be a power leg whereas the number one terminal can either be a power leg if it's 240 or it might be a neutral if it's 120. So Rector Seal always has their schematics laid out so that you're always breaking that number three terminal because in either case, whether it's 120 or 240, that number three terminal is going to be a power leg. So on these particular brands, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the wire from the number three terminal block on the header. We're going to take the red wire from our float switch and the gray wire from our float switch, and we are gonna wire nut all three of these wires together. We will then take the purple wire from the float switch and land that on the number three terminal block to the header. The black wire from the flow switch will then land on number one terminal block, whether that's a line voltage or a neutral. The orange gets unused. We cap that off and that is it. You're done. You just restore power, test everything, make sure it works. Now, if you don't see the brand you're trying to work on in this video, what you're looking for, you look in the manual and you want to find where your power supply is coming in on that header. So you want to find a terminal that has a power leg going to it. Um, and then you just want to go ahead and follow the instructions that I laid out in either one of the two examples in this video. And that should get most people through most situations.